Summary of Time to Think Listening to Ignite the Human Mind by Nancy Klein, written and narrated by Janky Mind. Introduction Time to Think is an insightful exploration of the transformative power of giving individuals our full attention and creating a space for genuine contemplation and dialogue. It reveals the profound impact that attentive listening and respectful silence can have on unleashing creativity, nurturing personal growth, and cultivating meaningful relationships. Have you ever found yourself in a bustling crowd yet felt like the sole focus of someone's undivided attention? The late Diana, Princess of Wales, possessed a remarkable ability to evoke this sensation in others, embodying a concept we refer to as the thinking environment. Her presence had the remarkable ability to dissolve anxiety, making people feel genuinely valued. She possessed a unique talent for shining the spotlight on others, even in a room filled with people gathered to see her. Why is this relevant? Well, the quality of everything we undertake is directly linked to the quality of our prior thinking, which, in turn, is influenced by the quality of attention we receive from others. Whether in organizations, families, or personal relationships, establishing a thinking environment can stimulate a wealth of innovative ideas, inspire action, and ensure individuals thrive. So, how can you create such an environment? It entails a blend of undivided attention, questioning that dismantles limiting assumptions, and fostering conditions conducive to independent thought. In this audiobook, we will delve deeply into each of these elements and immerse ourselves in the world of the thinking environment. Here, you will discover how to enhance your listening, questioning, and appreciation skills to unlock your own thinking potential and that of those around you. Chapter 1 Cultivating a Thinking Environment In our pursuit of creating a thinking environment, we encounter 10 essential conditions. For now, let's delve into three fundamental pillars attention, incisive questions, and appreciation. First and foremost, it's imperative to understand that the quality of your attention profoundly impacts another person's thinking. This cannot be emphasized enough. Offering genuine attention brings out the best in individuals, enabling them to articulate and innovate. Conversely, a lack of attention can cause them to stumble and struggle. A common scenario is when people share their problems, our instinct often leads us to jump into problem-solving mode, assuming that's what they desire. However, how often does the other person truly follow your advice? And even if they do, does it necessarily provide a fully satisfying resolution? It's often more beneficial to grant people the space to harness their own cognitive faculties in seeking solutions. Instead of rushing to offer advice, engage in active listening and pose questions like, what else comes to mind? Or what other thoughts do you have? This approach helps them uncover fresh ideas and alternative perspectives. Furthermore, when engaged in conversation, resist the urge to interrupt or complete the other person's sentences. Such interruptions stifle creativity and inhibit their full self-expression. Maintain eye contact as well, it's a potent signal of your undivided attention and underscores the importance of their ideas. Another integral aspect of the thinking environment is the use of incisive questions. These questions are designed to dismantle limiting assumptions, those negative beliefs that obstruct our thought processes and inspire innovative thinking. Consider a scenario where you're hesitant to approach your boss, Neil, fearing that he'll dismiss your ideas as foolish. Beneath this fear, you may uncover a deeper assumption that you might genuinely be inadequate or unintelligent. Such limiting assumptions hinder your actions and potential, impeding you from pursuing your goals. An incisive question, on the other hand, can be transformative. It prompts you to re-evaluate your limiting assumption, embrace a more empowering belief, and explore new avenues. For example, by asking, if you knew you were intelligent, how would you communicate with Neil? You challenge the limiting assumption and open the door to a more constructive perspective. 
Lastly, let's explore the third condition of a thinking environment appreciation, a significant influencer of independent thinking. Genuine praise motivates individuals to think autonomously far more effectively than repeated criticism. Strive to maintain a 5 to 1 ratio of appreciation to criticism in your interactions. When delivering criticism, always begin and end with positive remarks. Focus not on every flaw but on the primary one that, if addressed, would lead to substantial improvement. This approach ensures that criticism is received as constructive feedback, increasing the likelihood of positive change. To enhance thinking in your environment at large, simple and sincere appreciation can make a world of difference. Take a moment to acknowledge the strengths and virtues of others and express your admiration genuinely. Try it today. Think of someone you respect or value, someone you may not have openly praised in a while or ever. Choose words to convey your admiration and then share them. Repeat this practice weekly, ensuring your words are heartfelt and authentic. By applying the principles of attention, incisive questions, and appreciation, we can all contribute to unlocking innovative ideas, dispelling limiting assumptions, and nurturing a positive mindset within ourselves and those around us. Chapter 2 Enhancing Organizational Thinking Every single day, our lives are shaped by the decisions made by various organizations, whether they are businesses, educational institutions, or government bodies. These decisions dictate our work, our dietary choices, and even how we allocate our finances. The choices made by these organizations are a direct reflection of the quality of thinking that occurs within them. And the quality of thinking within an organization is profoundly influenced by how its members treat each other during the decision-making process. Consider, for instance, team meetings, which serve as the epicenter of group thinking in any organization. Transforming these meetings into nurturing grounds for thought, a true thinking environment, can be a hidden organizational superpower. The transformation begins by ensuring that every participant in the meeting has an opportunity to speak. This is of paramount importance because, all too often, it's the most vocal and swift individuals who dominate these gatherings. As a consequence, many valuable ideas remain unspoken, or worse, unthought. After all, people often think while they speak, and denying them a chance to express themselves also denies them a chance to think deeply. To establish this foundation, open each meeting by allowing everyone present to share what is currently progressing well in their work. This creates a positive atmosphere from which to address any challenges that may arise later. When it's time to discuss the first item on the agenda, ensure that every participant has the opportunity to contribute without interruption. This approach enhances group intelligence and encourages the free and rapid flow of ideas. These same principles can be applied to turbocharge brainstorming sessions. Allowing each individual to contribute their ideas in a structured order before opening the floor for further discussion can yield more innovative and distinct ideas. Incorporating pair discussions, where individuals bounce ideas off each other, can also uncover hidden gems. In essence, when people are allowed to express their thoughts without interruption, creativity flourishes organically. When it comes to handling challenging conversations between two people, the technique of time talks can be a game changer. The rules are straightforward, each person is granted an uninterrupted three-minute window to articulate their thoughts, while the other listens attentively. Once one person's three minutes are up, they must cease speaking, even if they're mid-sentence. This process continues, with each person taking turns for three minutes, until a solution or a suitable stopping point is reached. This method is versatile and can be applied to both personal and professional discussions. It can even be used in positive scenarios where creative solutions or intriguing problem-solving is sought. In essence, the overarching focus for organizations should be on nurturing a collaborative and non-competitive environment where the brilliance of every member can shine through. Chapter 3, The Thinking Session Do you ever feel like you're reacting to situations without much thought, 
or perhaps you find yourself stuck in inaction because you're unsure of how to approach a problem? Fortunately, there's a single remedy for both of these challenges, the dedicated thinking session held twice a week. These 30-minute sessions are designed to address a specific issue in your life. Ironically, despite occupying a portion of your schedule, these thinking sessions can save you a significant amount of time by altering your approach or transitioning you from passivity to a more effective problem-solving method. A thinking session involves two participants, one as the thinker and the other as the thinking partner. Each session consists of six stages. It begins with the thinking partner asking a simple question to the thinker, what would you like to think about? The thinker then responds, exploring their thoughts fully, without interruption from the thinking partner. Once the thinker appears to have shared everything, the thinking partner asks, is there anything more you would like to add or any additional thoughts or feelings on this matter? This gentle prompt often uncovers deeper layers of thought, allowing the thinker to overcome any self-imposed limitations on sharing. The session then progresses to the second stage, where the thinking partner inquires about the thinker's desired outcome for the session at this point. This refocuses the thinker's thinking, instills hope, and helps them prioritize their thoughts. It's crucial for the thinking partner to listen attentively, as the subsequent stages depend on this precision. Moving on to the third stage, the thinking partner encourages the thinker to identify the core assumptions that may be hindering their progress toward the goal. This exploration may require patience and further probing. Once the assumption is pinpointed, the thinker is prompted to articulate its positive counterpart. This shift might entail moving from I have no control over my life to I am the sole controller of my life. This reversal opens up a wider range of actions and possibilities. In the fourth stage, the thinking partner formulates an incisive question by blending the thinker's goal with their positive assumption. An example might be, if you were confident that you were the sole controller of your life, what actions would you take to live differently? The thinking partner should repeat this question until the thinker has explored all potential actions. This process serves to break down barriers and propel the thinker closer to their session objective. The fifth stage involves the thinker writing down the incisive question exactly as stated. This serves as a reference for future use, as the same question can prove valuable in different situations. It's also an opportunity for the thinker to record any action plans that emerge from the session. Finally, in the sixth stage, the session concludes on a positive note, with both participants expressing appreciation for each other's qualities. It's important to focus on personal attributes rather than the session's content, fostering an environment of respect and positivity. For instance, instead of saying, your ideas were excellent, you might say, I admire your approach to tackling challenges. In essence, a thinking session provides a space for deliberate, clear, and transformative thought, paving the way for effective problem-solving. Chapter 4, Cultivating Thinking Environments Everywhere Imagine a world where every place you go becomes a thinking environment, where individuals feel encouraged to voice their ideas, confident they will be heard and supported rather than criticized. Picture the potential that could be unlocked if each day, we woke up knowing that our ideas held value and that we would receive assistance in recognizing and shedding limiting beliefs. Transforming commonplace settings into thinking environments might appear to be a minor change, but its impact would be profound, permeating every aspect of our lives. Let's explore how this transformation could manifest in a few scenarios, schools, families, and romantic relationships. Reinventing schools as thinking environments would foster personal growth and nurture critical thinking skills. If you're a teacher, a powerful guideline could be to challenge your students by soliciting their opinions five times more frequently than imparting your own. Another innovative idea is to dedicate the last 10 minutes of each class to thinking pair discussions. Form pairs of students and allocate five minutes of uninterrupted speaking time to each. They should reflect on that day's lesson and also voice any confusion or questions. 
This practice not only enhances learning but also hones listening skills. Creating a thinking environment within families is equally crucial for personal growth and nurturing thinking skills. While it's impossible to shield children entirely from external influences or guarantee their perpetual independence of thought, you can provide them with a secure space to explore their own ideas. The foundation of this approach lies in refraining from belittling children or underestimating their capabilities. A vital aspect involves dedicating time to them without rushing or dismissing their thoughts, showing respect for their ideas no matter how unconventional they may seem. One practical way to instill this practice is through shared evening meals. Begin each meal by having every family member, including parents, share the highlights and challenges of their day. Ensure that each person has a turn to speak while others actively listen. Then, continue with regular dinner conversation. The outcome is often a deeper mutual respect, an enriched family dynamic, and the nurturing of a thinking environment. Finally, turning love relationships into thinking environments can lead to profound growth and deeper connection. Commence by eliminating interruptions, allowing your partner to explore their thoughts freely. By refraining from completing their sentences, you take the first step toward fostering mutual respect and genuine attention. Additionally, institute a nightly routine of listening to each other's daily experiences. Be fully present and refrain from offering unsolicited advice or commentary. A general guideline could be to allocate 15 minutes of uninterrupted speaking time to each partner. Providing undivided attention nurtures connection and communicates value. Crucially, create space for emotional expression without rushing to fix problems or provide solutions. Modern society often stigmatizes emotional expression, promoting repression rather than acknowledging the natural release of emotions. Suppressing emotions is detrimental to our well-being and obstructs clear thinking. Whether it's tears, expressions of anger, or moments of fear, these are natural outlets for emotional release that facilitate clear thinking. So, if your partner expresses emotions, sit with them, listen attentively without anxiety or excessive concern, and they will recover and regain their clarity of thought more swiftly. Summary The influence of a thinking environment is truly remarkable. When we prioritize authentic attention, respectful listening, and genuine appreciation, we empower individuals to tap into their complete thinking potential and promote their personal development. Establishing a thinking environment entails cultivating spaces where people are not only welcomed to express their ideas freely but also heard without interruption. Furthermore, it allows for the natural expression of emotions, cultivating a culture characterized by profound respect, unwavering attention, and elevated thinking capabilities. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.